Hi guys, welcome back to the session. In the today's session, we will learn about reframework in UiPath. So let's get started. So this reframework stands for Robotic Enterprise Framework, which is a project template based on state machine. It is created to fit the best practices in the project such as read and store config data into dictionary, kill unnecessary process and initialize the required application, exception handling and taking screenshots, retrieving data from orchestrator queue or Excel sheets or database etc. It also has locking mechanism feature and several other features as well. So now that we are familiar with this reframework, let's try to understand its architecture. So when you will create a project in UiPath using reframework, you will get the project structure something like this. So as I said, this framework is built on state machine with a combination of state activities, final state activities and the transitions. So these all terms we have learnt in the session of state machine. So you can check out the video on state machine for the quick reference of these terms. Now let's try to understand this architecture architecture in a bit more detail. Now the architecture of reframework is a combination of state such as initialization, get transaction data, process transaction and a final state that is end process. Now in the initialization state config data is read and the application is initialized and if this is successful then the flow moves to get transaction data state. But if we get any system exception in initialization then the flow moves to end process. Now if I talk about this get transaction data state, so this state is used to retrieve data from orchestrator queues, excel sheets, database etc wherever you have kept your project data. And if the data retrieval is successful then the flow moves to process transaction state and if there is no data to retrieve then the flow moves to end process. Now if I talk about this process transaction state, so this is the state where the transaction data is processed to perform the required task on the application. And if the process transaction is a success, then the flow moves to get transaction data again to retrieve the next transaction data. Also if there is any business exception, then the flow moves to get transaction data again to retrieve the next set of data for processing. But if there is any system exception, in that case the flow moves to initialization block and the flow is started from there again. So now we will quickly create a project in UiPath using reframework to get more knowledge on it. So here we are in the UiPath. Let's quickly create a new project using this robotic enterprise framework which creates a transactional business process that follows best practices for large scale deployments. So let's click over here and let's provide the name of the project as RE framework demo and my project will be stored in this location and this is the description. So let's click on create. And here we are in the UiPath design page. Let's double click on main. So here we get the template of the RE framework. So in the previous projects we were required to add workflow types such as sequence, flowcharts or the state machines to define the structure of the project. But here the structure is already def defined using the workflow types. All we need to add is the activities specific to our project. So I will quickly move to the file explorer from here and this is the folder of our project. If I move to this data, so here we have this config file which stores the configuration information of the project. So if I open this one, so this is our config file with three sheets. First is settings, second is constant and the third is asset. So all these sheets are defined with the columns name, their value and their description. Now in the settings sheet, you can add the URL of the application. You can add the browser on which you want to launch your application. If you have your project data in an Excel sheet, let's say that you have your project data in an Excel sheet like this. So you can provide your sheet name, Excel path, all these details you can provide inside the settings. So by default, it has provided the orchestrator queue name. 
if your project data is inside the orchestrator queue you can provide the queue name over here then by default it has also provided log f business process name and the value is framework it is a logging field now if i talk about this constant sheet so here we can provide the maximum retry number so in case of exception if you wish your workflow to be executed again you can provide the maximum retry number over here to denote how many times you want your workflow to get retried next we have is the screenshot folder path so you can provide the screenshot folder path over here then you can provide the log messages over here as well if you want to define any page load time or delays you can define over here next sheet with us is the asset which is used to get the asset from the orchestrator if you have not defined any asset inside the orchestrator you can remove this sheet or if you have assets inside the orchestrator you can provide the values over here so that was all about the config file with us if i move to file explorer again so if i move to the project folder here we have a folder framework so if i open this framework here we have multiple workflows so all these are predefined workflows present which can be called according to the requirement in the project so let's move to ui path again and let's look into the workflow now so this general business process is a state machine type here you see type is written as state machine and inside this state machine we have different states which we discussed so first let's get started with the initialization state so if i open this one first of all this initialization is used to read configuration file and initialize applications used in the process so if i open this one so here you see this initialization state is surrounded by this try catch and finally block for exception handling and it starts with assigning the system exception variable to nothing so if i open the variable from here so here you see this system exception is a variable of type exception so we have assigned nothing to the system exception so what does it mean so it means that we don't have any system exception as of now then it moves to the if block and here it says config is nothing so what is this config so config is a variable of type dictionary so what it's trying to do it will read the data from the config file and it will store it inside the dictionary variable that is config so this entire process to read data from config file and store it inside the dictionary variable we learned in the previous session you can check out that video for the quick reference so in this block it's going to read the data from config file and store it inside the dictionary variable so first of all it says config is nothing that means this dictionary variable doesn't contain any value as of now we have not written any data inside this dictionary variable so now we will try to read the data from this config file and store it inside this dictionary variable that is config so if this condition satisfies that is config is nothing then we will move to this first run so if i open this first run so in the first run this init all settings workflow activity is invoked which is used to read data from the configuration file and store it inside the dictionary variable and this init all settings workflow is inside the framework folder which we already discussed in the very beginning this is the framework folder where we have this init all settings workflow along with the other workflows as well so this init all settings workflow is invoked with these arguments i believe you already know how to invoke a workflow using arguments in case you want a reference you can check out my previous video for a quick reference so with these arguments this init all settings workflow is invoked let's open this workflow and here we have all the activities to read the data from the configuration file and store it inside the dictionary variable which we have already learned step by step in the previous session you can check out that video as well if you face any issue over here so let's go one by one let's see what all we have what all activities we have so under this initialize all setting sequence first of all this out config which is an argument is initialized as a dictionary variable 
this out config argument is initialized as a dictionary variable then we have a for each loop for for each sheet in the config sheets this config sheet argument holds the value settings and constant from here the settings sheet and the constant sheet so we are going to read each of these sheets one by one so for each sheet in the config sheet we are going to read the sheet one by one and store it inside the data table that is settings and constants now the values which are present inside the sheet is now present inside the settings and constants data table so we are going to loop through each row of the data table settings and constants and for each row under the settings and constants data table we are going to assign the values to out config dictionary as a key and value pair so all these column names will be the key and corresponding these will be the values so we are assigning the values key value pairs to this out config argument with a condition so why we are providing a condition over here because the dictionary keys cannot be null or white space so this condition checks whether the data table column name is not equal to null or white space and if the name column is not null or white space then it is assigning the values as a key value pair inside this out config dictionary variable so this block is reading the data from the excel sheets and storing it inside the dictionary variable now next comes the try block for initializing assets so if i open this try block here again it is reading the config file that is it is reading this config file again and this time it is reading the sheet as asset so this is reading the asset sheet and storing the result inside the data table which is asset now for each row inside the asset for each row in the data table as asset it has added the activity to get orchestrator asset so if you have an orchestrator asset it will fetch that asset and if you don't have then it will skip that step now moving forward next we have is the catch section where it is going to catch the exception if we have any and accordingly it will log a message with log level as warning and with this message and then you can add an activity for the finally state according to the requirement in the project now if i move back to main so this was all about the invoke init all settings workflow in the first run now moving to the next block now this block is used to override the queue name in the configuration file in case the argument that is orchestrator queue name is specified so using this init all settings workflow we have read the data from this config file and stored it inside a dictionary variable config now here you see in the setting sheet we have a orchestrator queue name so this is also stored as a key and value pair inside the config variable but inside the flow if we are providing the argument over here that is orchestrator queue name if we are providing the value of this argument inside the flow either as a default value or anywhere inside the workflow as an activity in that case it is going to override the value of the queue name from here to the value of this orchestrator queue name argument now to do so what it is doing it is first checking a condition that if in orchestrator queue name argument is not null or empty that means it has some value then we are storing it inside the config dictionary as a key and a value pair so if we provide the value of this argument that is in orchestrator queue name anywhere inside the workflow or as a default value then it's going to override the value which we have stored in the config file as a key value pair from this config sheet now we'll move ahead and let's see what all we have next so next we have is invoke kill processes workflow so now it's going to invoke the kill pro kill all process workflow which is also present inside the framework for folder that is kill all process workflow 
so let's move back to ui path and it has not provided any argument over here so why we are going to use this kill all process workflow in what scenario we should use that now let's say that there are some process which are open which might cause an issue to the project execution so in that case we can kill all the processes which are unwanted so do so, so to do so what we will do we will open the workflow from here this is the kill all process workflow so and from the activities what we are going to do we are going to search this kill kill process activity we'll drag and drop it over here and we will provide the process which are required to get closed and then we will have a log message which log level as trace and a message as killing process you can modify this message according to your requirement so let's delete this as of now let's move back to main now after this kill process we have this add log fields which is used to add the process name to the log generated after this point now this log field is going to be very helpful to create reports and visualizations about the process so you can modify this one according to your requirement so all these activities we discussed under this first run sequence now if i move back to the initialization block we discuss this first run sequence where we read the data from the configuration file and stored it inside the dictionary variable and we killed all the unwanted processes now after this we have the another workflow which gets invoked and this is init all applications workflow which is used to initialize your application required inside the project now this workflow is invoked with in config argument which holds the value of config dictionary variable which has all the values from this config file from the settings constants and the asset sheet so let's cancel this one and open this workflow as well so in this workflow we are going to initialize the application so for that we can add the activities over here to launch the application provide username and password to log into the application and after that we have a log message over here with log level as trace and the message as opening applications and accordingly we can modify this message according to the requirement now let's move back to main so that was all about the try block of this initialization state if i move to catch block if i expand this catch block now the catch block is going to handle the exception if we get any and it is doing so by assigning the exception to the system exception variable so that was all about the initialization state if we quickly recap about this state so this initialization state reads config data from file and from assets and stores the data inside the dictionary variable and to do so it invokes a workflow that is init all settings workflow next it closes all unnecessary processes using kill all processes workflow and after that it initializes the application specific to your project and to do so it invokes a workflow that is init all applications workflow now we are done with the initialization state let's move to the next state so inside this initialization state if we get any system exception then the flow will move to end process where the process will be ended and all the applications will be closed but if we do not get any exception inside this initialization block that means if this state is successful the flow will move to this get transaction data so this get transaction data state is used to retrieve the data from the orchestrator queues excel sheets database etc so if i open this get transaction data so this get transaction data retrieves a new transaction data to be processed which we discussed and it do so with the help of this transaction number variable if i expand this variable so here we have this transaction number variable of type integer and the default value is 1 so this transaction number variable holds the current transaction number and it gets incremented if the data is processed successfully now incrementing this variable makes the framework retrieve the next transaction 
also let's say that during processing the data if we get any exception and if we want to retry then in such case retrying a failed transaction if we are trying to retry a failed transaction this transaction number variable is not incremented until the maximum number of retry attempts are reached so let's see what all activities we have inside this state so first of all we have this should stop activity which checks if the stop is triggered in ui path orchestrator so it could be possible that the user stops the job which is getting executed inside the ui path orchestrator because of some reasons so in such case the flow is going to log a message and move to in process state so let's see how it can be done so we have this if activity where there is a condition should stop so what is this should stop should stop is also a variable let me show you so this should stop is a variable of type boolean now if the should stop is true if the value of should stop is true then we'll move to this block that is orchestrator stop is requested here we are logging a message that stop process requested and we are assigning this transaction item the value nothing now what is this transaction item transaction item is also a variable and the variable type is q item so this transaction item variable is going to store the queue item so this we have learnt in the orchestrator queue session so if i move to orchestrator so here we are in the queue section of the orchestrator where we have created this my queue in the previous session and we have added few items to this queue so if you click on this few view transaction so here we have multiple of items present which we have added in the previous session and all these items hold some data so if you click on view details so here you see it holds the data height in inches height in feet and weight so all these items hold the data so all these are the queue items and this transaction item variable holds the queue item now in case your project data is in the orchestrator queue something like this and if you wish to retrieve the data which we did in the previous session using get transaction data activity then the variable type queue item will work for you but let's say that your data is inside the excel sheet let's say that these all are the project data which on which you wish to work in such case the transaction item variable of type queue item will not work so in such case what you will do you will change the variable type over here to data table dot row so we will see this transaction item in a bit more detail a bit later let's move back to our flow so we are done with the then block if the condition is true then do all these activities if the condition is false we'll move to the else part where we have this invoke get transaction data workflow so this get transaction data workflow will be invoked with all these arguments with these arguments this workflow is invoked so if i open this workflow so this workflow will be used to get a transaction item from a specified source it could be orchestrator queues it could be spreadsheets database mailbox or web apis so in this workflow we are going to retrieve our project data if your project data is inside the orchestrator queue in the form of something like this so we are going to retrieve this items from the orchestrator queue in case your data is inside the excel sheet so we are going to retrieve that by storing all these data inside the data table and looping through each of the rows of the data table so in such case we will get the project data and that data will be stored inside the transaction item variable now if there is no transaction items remaining so let's say that if all the data has been retrieved if all these data has been retrieved at the end there is no data if there is any no data to be retrieved in such case the out transaction item is set to nothing which will move the flow to the in process state so let's see what all activities we have so under this block that is get transaction item under this block we are going to add activities according to the requirement to get the data either from the orchestrator queue spreadsheets database etc so in this block we will write all the activities to get the data
now we, in the next block we have this if new transaction item is retrieved get additional information about it so if you want any additional information along with the data so you can provide the values over here and those will be stored inside these arguments if i move over here these are the arguments along with this out transaction item this out transaction item is going to store our data either from the excel sheet either from the excel sheet it's going to store the data or from the orchestrator whatever is the requirement so this out transaction item is going to store the data and later on it will assign it to the transaction item variable which we saw under the main and inside the variables we saw this transaction item variable now moving back to get transaction data workflow so all done under this workflow the main thing is that we are going to add the activities over here to retrieve the data from the source now moving back to main again so we did a walk through on get transaction data workflow just now which was present inside the try block then we have the catch block as well where the exception will be handled and then we can add activities inside the finally block as well according to the requirement of the project so that was all about this get transaction data workflow if i move back to main so we discuss this get transaction data workflow let's quickly recap what we have over here so this get transaction data state retrieves a new transaction data to be processed from a specified source such as orchestrator queues spreadsheets database mailbox or web apis and to do so all the activities are provided inside this get transaction data workflow now the retrieve data is stored inside the transaction item variable and the transaction number variable holds the current transaction number and incrementing this variable makes the framework to retrieve the next transaction and at the end if there is any no transaction items remaining the out transaction item is set to nothing which leads to the end process state so that was all about the get transaction data state we will move back to ui part to understand the framework further so in this get transaction data state if there is no data remaining to be retrieved the flow will move to the end process where the process will be ended and all the applications will be closed but if we have any data which gets retrieved then the flow will move to this process transaction now under this process transaction state the transaction data will be processed to perform the required task on your application so if i open this process transaction so this process transaction state starts with assigning this nothing to the business exception which is a variable let me show you this business exception inside the variables so this is a the business exception variable of variable type business rule exception so you see we have the two variables related to exception first is system exception of type exception and second is business exception of type business rule exception so how are you going to categorize the exceptions between this system exception and business exception so let me show you the difference between these exceptions with the help of an example so let's say that we have some project data with the phone number and this phone number should be entered as a 10 digit value inside the application but instead of providing this 10 digit value if you provide a 9 digit value then the application will not accept this phone number so such type of exception comes under the business exception business rule exception whereas let's say that your web page is not getting loaded because of the network issue time out issue in such case those exceptions come under the system exception now moving back to ui path so in the very beginning business exception is assigned nothing that means there is no exception in the very beginning of this state and after that the process workflow is getting invoked with the arguments in transaction item and in config which holds the value transaction item and the config config is a dictionary variable which holds all the configuration data from this config sheet and the next with us is the transaction item which holds the current transaction item so let's click on okay and let's open this workflow 
so here we are going to add the activities which are required to perform the task inside the application now moving to the main again so that was inside the try block and if i move to the catch block in the catch block the business rule exception or the system exception is going to be catched and next we have is the finally block so if i open this finally block and this finally block is used to set transaction status and move to the next transaction so if you have watched my previous video on orchestrator queue then you would know that at the end of the task when all the task has been performed inside the application at the end we set the transaction status to successful or failure according to the results and then we will move to process the next transaction that is to get the next transaction data to be processed so under the finally block we are doing the same thing using the set transaction status workflow with these arguments with these arguments we are invoking the workflow so let's close this and open this workflow which is set transaction status so based on the some conditions of successful or failure we are setting the transaction status so first of all it has provided a condition that if business exception is nothing and system exception is nothing that means we didn't get any exception we didn't get any business exception and we didn't get any system exception if this is the case if this is true then we move to success sequence and in the success sequence it says if the transaction item is processed without any exception its state is updated as successful now since both the business exception and system exception are nothing that means we get a success so we will set the transaction status to success in this success sequence so if i open this one so here you see it is setting the transaction status to successful we already did all these activities in orchestrator queue session please refer to that video in case you face any issues and then it logs success and we can add additional logging fields as well over here now if i move back to set transaction status and after this success sequence there is one more sequence which will get executed that is increment transaction index so if i open this one so here it says increment the transaction number to get the next transaction to be processed so we had learnt earlier that there is a transaction number variable and here it is getting incremented by 1 to get the next transaction and since this is a success we don't need to retry that's why the retry is reset to zero here we re reset the retry to zero now if we move back to set transaction status again so we understood this flow if i move to the next condition next condition with us is the business exception is not nothing so here you see we have provided the condition business exception is not nothing that means we get a business exception so in such case if we move to the true part that means if business exception is not nothing that means we get some business exception so here it says if business rule exception is thrown during the process the transaction item status is updated as failed so in the success sequence we set the transaction status to successful because we get a success but since here we are getting an exception a business exception so we will set the transaction status to failed so if i open this one this is exactly similar we will set the transaction status to failed and then we can log a business exception with additional logging fields so if i move back to set transaction status here also after this business exception we will move to this increment transaction index so here again the transaction number will be incremented by 1 to get the next transaction item and retry in this case also we will reset to zero so we are not going to retry in case the business exception occurs why because even if we retry in case of business exception we will get the exception again why because let's say that if you provided the phone number as 8 digit and it should be 10 digits and you get the exception now if you retry this one again you will get the exception again because it would not convert into a 10 digit phone number so we are not going to retry in case of business exception so if i move over here and if i see this false section that is 
there is no business exception but there is a system exception so here it says if a system exception occurs during the process the transaction item status is updated as failed so in this case also we are updating the transaction item status as failed so here it has some activity so if i open this one so here this starts with a queue retry variable so this is a queue retry variable which is a variable of type boolean and in the expression it states that it states that transaction item is not nothing and transaction item type should be queue so if both these conditions satisfy that means queue item is queue retry is true so if the queue retry value is true if the queue retry value is true then we will set the transaction status to failed and we will assign a retry number over here to retry in case of system exception we can retry that transaction to be processed again and moving forward next with us is add transaction log fields this activity is used to add the log fields then retry current transaction workflow is invoked for the retry mechanism so if you open this workflow here we have the in re entire retry mechanism so the process will be retried until and unless we reach the maximum retry number so here you see it starts with a condition that is maximum retry number greater than 0 if this is false then it will simply log a message and increment transaction number and if the condition is true then it will again check if the maximum retry is reached or not if the maximum retry is reached the again it will log a message and with reset the retry counter and it will increment the transaction number if the maximum retry is not reached then it will log the message retry and it will follow the retry mechanism and once it is done then it will increment the transaction number and it will increment the retry number now if i move to set transaction status again so we did a walk through on retry current transaction workflow then it will remove the transaction log file and then we have a workflow to take the screenshot so this workflow is used to take the screenshots if i open this one so here the activity has been added to take the screenshot we can take the screenshot in case of exception occurs so it has provided a sequence of activities to take the screenshot in a effective manner so if i move back to set transaction status again so in the try block this take screenshot workflow will be invoked and in case of any exception it will be captured under the catch block now once all this is is done then we are going to close the application it closes all applications before returning to initialization state and opening them again so in case of system exception what it's going to do it's going to close all the applications before returning to the initialization state for opening them again so we have this invoke close all applications workflow so inside this close all applications workflow we are going to add the activities to close the application so if i open this workflow so here we are going to add the activities to close the applications according to the requirement in the project so let's move to set transaction status again so that was inside the try block for try closing applications and in case of exceptions that will be handled inside the catch block so we were in the system exception of set transaction status if i move back over here again so we did a walk through on all the conditions that is success business exception and system exception to set the transaction status so that was all about this set transaction status if i move back to main from here again and if i move to main so that was all about the process transaction state and as we discussed in the very beginning of the project when we discussed the architecture if the process transaction is successful then we'll move again to this get transaction data state to get the new transaction data if there is any business exception again then it will again move to get transaction data to get the new data and in case of system exception it's going to the initialization state again and the flow will start again from here
now we have not opened this end process which is a final state so this in process ends the process and closes all applications which are used so if i open this one so here also the activities are surrounded under the try catch and finally block so if i open this try block so this try block is invoking this close all applications workflow so if i open this workflow so here we need to add the activities to close the applications for the project according to the requirement now let's move to main again so under the try block the applications will be closed and in doing so if we get any exception that will be cached inside the catch block and in the finally block also we can add the activities according to the requirement so let's move back to the main so that was all about the re framework architecture guys you can go through this architecture and let me know in case you face any query or issue you can also refer my previous videos because most of the functionalities of re framework i have covered in the previous sessions in detail so you can check out my previous videos for a quick reference and that's all for this session guys hope you enjoyed this video and if you did give it a like and share with your friends and hit the bell button to get the updates on the latest videos and i will see you soon in the next one bye bye